Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit from Monday. Over here in the Atlantic, we had, what's her name, Ophelia. Go off to the north, east of Bermuda over here. Fortunately, avoided the island there. She is now brushing Newfoundland on her way out and is bringing some tropical storm conditions to them up there as she rapidly weakens. We have Philippe out over here, has been sheared by Ophelia's outflow for the last several days and looks like the convection is still trying to get pushed off to the south of his center. He is drifting west-southwest, but he is going to curve out to the northeast as we talked about. See, there is a front here. The, the pattern is too progressive along the eastern seaboard for Philippe to avoid hitting one of these fronts and getting dragged out, kicking and screaming to the northeast, and so he is going to go away and is not going to be a threat to anyone here and will be one of those weakling systems that never gets up to hurricane status before leaving. And now look what's going on already. We have this front out here, and Ophelia lifted out. So now we have some high pressure developing behind the front over here over the central United States, and it's very cold, 60 degree temperatures down over the Gulf Coast. And you can see what happens even just after a day or so of high pressure building in over here, the Caribbean starts to look interesting. Even when we're in the downward motion phase of the MJO, you can see that the cloudiness already starts to increase in here. And we have a mid-level low at the tail end of this front. Now this probably won't be the storm that we're looking for, but you can see what happens when the tail ends of these fronts get caught down here south of high pressure to the north over the continent. So things are already looking interesting down here and cloudiness will only continue to increase over the next coming days as the MJO starts to creep its way across towards the Caribbean again. And after a few days of this, some interesting things are probably going to start happening. The models are starting to see the kind of mischief that can go on here. This is the European from last night out to day 6, 144 hours. This is next Sunday. And notice what we have here, a big high pressure area over the eastern seaboard right over here. And to the south of it, notice we have a strong pressure gradient. And this is this is one of those setups where this high could be around for a few days, bringing Florida a good five-day period of very nasty weather. Because notice these winds over here. These are at 850 millibars, so 5,000 feet up. These greens are 45 knots or so coming right into the Florida coast here out of the east. This pressure gradient is pretty strong. That could translate down to nearly gale force at the surface. And notice we have a little surface trough developing here at the northwestern part of the Bahamas. And if we go out to day seven, this closes off into a low here. And this is sitting off just south of Cape Canaveral here. We have some sort of low pressure area down under 1,005 millibars right along the east coast of Florida, bringing gales into the coast from the east here over long stretch south of this high pressure area. And now we have to ask ourselves, well, what is this? Because this is pretty far north here. This is right to the south of this high pressure area. What do the upper level winds look like? So if we go to the upper level winds for day seven, this might be a little bit hard to see, but here's Florida outlined in red here. And then these green lines are isobars showing the surface. So you can see the surface low in here and then focus on these purple wind barbs. These are the 200 millibar winds over here. Notice we have a strong jet stream in here that curves up like this across this whole area. And this is, a, this is the subtropical jet stream in here. And it curves like this. So we have an upper level trough right over Florida and then the surface low right underneath it. So this suggests to us that this is a subtropical low, not a tropical one, a subtropical low. The reason we can tell that is because we have an upper trough over the system which implies cold air aloft and it's north of the subtropical jet stream which again implies cool air aloft which means this is a, this is a subtropical development which often happens to the south of these big highs that force pressure gradients to their south. This is something that we could expect. This is one of those scenarios that can happen early on as we first get the high pressure to build up. Up here. So we could have a low try to develop near the pressure gradient over the Bahamas or just east of Florida and then it could bring gale force winds to the coast for several days in a row. This could be a nasty period of weather for Florida here. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, this isn't quite the scenario that we were expecting from this kind of a thing with the MJO coming back. We were expecting a nice deep tropical system to develop in here and come out like a classic, not one of these messy subtropical things. Well, but this could be, this pattern is going to last a while and there's different stages to it. This is a very early stage. In fact, just a few days ago, the models showed nothing here for this time period. And I opined that they would eventually come around to showing more activity. And indeed, they're now showing this here. But this is only only stage one because by this t this point, this is six to seven days out, the MJO won't fully be here yet. In fact, you can see there's a hurricane over here in the Pacific by this time. So the MJO is still in the process of getting towards the Eastern Pacific and then eventually working to the Caribbean. Until it gets here, it's not pumping a lot of heat out into the Caribbean right now, which means that the subtropical
tropical jet is going to be here influencing the area and as long as it's this far south we're going to have the potential for subtropical messes to develop to the south of this high but eventually the MJO will come back over the Caribbean in here and once it starts outputting a lot of heat in the upper levels it'll eventually force the subtropical jet stream farther north and allow a bubble of high pressure to develop aloft and allow more of a deep tropical system to potentially develop in the Caribbean and come out like this so we may get more than one storm of more than one type out of this pattern because it could last for a good 10 days before it's over. But here's what's interesting about the current setup. If we do get a subtropical storm off the Florida coast near the Bahamas, we may not get one, but it'll still be a strong strong couple of days of winds for Florida in here either way. But if we get a, if we get a storm out of this, there's something interesting going on. If we go out to day 6 here, on the GFS ensembles, we can see that there's a big ridge over the East United States south of the Hudson Bay, and this has been pushing eastward. It starts out over here, and we get this Pacific jet stream that's really punching in, and what happens is when the MJO is strong like it is now over in the Western Pacific, then it propagates eastward towards the Eastern Pacific. It tends to drag upper-level troughs with it, mid-latitude troughs. So we get a couple of troughs coming out of the Pacific, and the jet stream is strong. We push one of them into the Rockies over here, and this could this could bring Texas some rain, which is of interest here. Um, bare clinically forced rain with a front perhaps trying to get into northern Texas in here, which is interesting for them. But again, this will be budding up against the ridge and then it's not going to get very far. This trough will probably try to lift out and flatten out over here, not going to progress straight eastward across the country. But this push from the Pacific may be enough to push this ridge far enough over southeastern Canada that this trough gets out. And you can see that it's hanging back in here. And subtropical development, if we get any, will be along the tail end of this trough as it gets split off over here to the south of the ridge. But watch what happens if we go from day 6 to day 8 here. This trough kind of gets pushed out a little bit. And it's out towards the Canadian Maritimes, way out there, you can see that we have this hanging back. And again, the push from the Pacific may be enough to push this ridge just far enough east that we could get something trapped down here instead of lifting out quickly. If we get development, it's either going to scoot out quickly to the northeast or the ridge could build over it and get trapped. And if we have something like that happen, then we could have a scenario like the Canadian from last night showed, where you get development east of Florida and then it moves westward and retrogrades beneath the high. And look at this. This is a 988 millibar subtropical low. Look at the radius of this thing. This is the 1004 millibar isobar here. This is like a 500 mile wide circle of gale force winds this thing right here. This is a big mess for Florida and surrounding areas. This could be an ugly pattern with high pressure remaining to the north blocking everything. This could be an interesting situation if we have this happen, but of course the Canadian is also notorious for building these things up a little bit too much. So chances are we will see at least a windy a windy period for Florida here as the high pressure builds to the north and brings scales to the coast. We may or may not see subtropical development here. We'll have to get more into the situation once we actually get towards this weekend to see what's going to happen. But starting this weekend, we are going to see mischief begin in this area of the world. And then, after we have a few days of nasty weather in here, then the MJO starts coming back, and I had this map up. Yeah, here it is. This is the upward motion map. The MJO is currently way over here, all the green colors, all the convection in the Western Pacific. The browns over the Atlantic are starting to subside a little bit. We had up to minus 8 brown sitting over here over the Caribbean for the last few days. That's starting to shift off a little to the east, and some green is starting to show up in the Eastern Pacific. So eventually, this is all going to hop over here, and we'll have the MJO sitting over here in the Caribbean. And then after a few days of the potential for subtropical mischief east of Florida, we could, as I mentioned, get a deeper tropical mischief trying to go in the Caribbean and then come north, more of a deep tropical nature that could be a stronger hurricane type of system in the Caribbean if it develops in the proper location because then the wind shear will be lower in that region. So we'll have to be watching this right through mid-month, if not longer, and we could get multiple systems out of this pattern before it's all said and done. But the models are now starting to latch on to what made sense for weeks before now what should transpire, and now the computers are now starting to latch on to the idea. So we'll have to watch this closely starting this weekend. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.